all over the country in the 60s, there was an attitude that old was bad. It was make freeways, put freeways through, make, make new buildings. Charles Hall Page, whose name is famous to us all, and his friend Harry Miller had started San Francisco Heritage because they were concerned that no one was being an advocate for the historic look of San Francisco, the historic urban design patterns, the historic buildings of San Francisco. San Francisco Heritage began on a park bench with two people talking about the wholesale destruction of the urban renewal plan to remove all of the Victorians, which at the time were considered junk, and realizing that this is wrong, uh, that something very valuable to the culture and history of San Francisco was being lost and something needed to be done to try and call attention to that. It wasn't right for uh a number of uh, reasons. Uh, one, of course, was the housing stock. Uh, the other was the sort of Victorian design and architecture. Another was that this was a community of the people who lived in these houses. There was a very uh, broad and active historic preservation effort nationally, in, in particularly in urban areas around the country and that, I think, was an encouragement and support for organizations like uh, Heritage. I think Charlie wanted to do a San Francisco version of Charleston, Savannah, etc. And those organizations had been around for a really long time, 50 years, maybe more. They were well established in their communities. The redevelopment era emerged in the 1950s and 60s across the country. It was an effort to clear urban blight uh, from our cities. And in many ways, the preservation movement is a direct response to the demolition of historic neighborhoods that occurred during that redevelopment push. San Francisco Heritage was founded in 1971 after redevelopment plans in San Francisco called for the demolition of large swaths of neighborhoods such as the Western Edition that displaced primarily African-American residents, also demolished many very significant Victorian homes and neighborhoods in that era. Certain of the oldest and least uh, powerful properties were slated for demolition, despite the fact that they held very important buildings uh, in, in terms of uh, examples of Victorian housing. Heritage convinced redevelopment agency that we should move those Victorians because they were each one architecturally significant. They were moved to south of Geary and about Divisadero. You have to do this at night because there can't be any traffic. And Victorians are tall. And even if you try to pick streets that don't have any overhead wires, you're never going to find a whole path that will be. So you have to pay the city and others to come and take the overhead wires down, let the building get through that block. The, next, the wires in the next block are down. These go back up. And this just, and the, and, and the, the moving truck goes pretty slowly, too. I mean, it's not zipping along. That was all done one night in a very cold evening. We drank a lot of rum that night, or brandy, actually. Oh, it was very fun. It was very cold, but it was very fun. Some of the redevelopment agency staff brought coffee, and people brought snacks and the whole preservation community turned out. The 1960s were a watershed moment, and from the standpoint of preservation, uh, the National Historic Preservation Act was uh, created in 1966, and this set in motion people's rethinking of preservation ideals.
people were thinking in terms of what do we have and what is valuable. As the city grew, its residential architecture took distinctive forms, and in older sections, blocks of apartments like these are still common. A group of architectural historians had decided that San Francisco needed to have an architectural study done of it. And they decided to go to the Junior League because the Junior League had ladies who had to do volunteer work and who were probably pretty well educated. So they thought that was a good place to start. Mrs. Gigi Platt and her Junior League members had seen that the city was vulnerable. And so they did a amazing forethought study called Here Today, and they identified important structures which they also felt might be vulnerable. It started to elevate the awareness of the resource uh, that we had. Heritage was a fledgling organization in 1971 and was sharing space with the National Trust for Historic Preservation. About nine people in its one-person office. The Hustle-Lillian's all family. Their heirs had a house which they loved and I think were quite torn by the prospect of turning it over to the market. They wanted to, of course, retain uh, the integrity of the property. In 1973, the Hollis Lowenthal family, the descendants, uh, gave the house to San Francisco Heritage. In addition to having their offices in the, at the top floor, Heritage opened the lower two floors as a house museum. What it really did was to give Heritage a home for people to think of it as, as this, this represents the organization. San Francisco Architectural Heritage, by owning the house, had a focal point. It had a place that it could invite people for house tours. It could have lectures in the ballroom. It could rent it out for an evening party. And I just think it's, it's wonderful. <laughs>